React, the most canonical front-end library that's definitely not a framework. It's given the world use effect or... <laughs> React is fast. In fact, it's so fast that even its charts are blazingly red. You should probably put like, lol, not fast. Leptos, commonly mistaken for the disease leptospirosis, which spreads blazingly fast. Doesn't have a nice website like React, which is funny because it's a UI framework, but is the new kid on the block for Rust UI frameworks. It feels a lot like SolidJS using those reactive signals. Leptos is blazingly full stack, isomorphic, web, framework, fine grain reactivity, declarative. Now I may know all those words individually, but when I hear them put together just like that, it sounds blazingly fast. So the test this time is gonna be a server-side rendering of React and Fastify versus, of course, Leptos and Actix. Now I do want you to stick around because I have three things I have to show you that are gonna just blow your socks off. It is incredible, the results of this. Now everyone has told me that Fastify is the speedy HTTP framework for Node and Actix seems to be the most used, though I'm positive you're gonna go, what about Axum in the comments, okay? Just say the comment now, just type it out, and then, then just keep on watching, okay? But I also wanna be able to do a client-side test to see does Leptos and Wasm actually hold up to its promise on the client? So if you press that like button right now, I will come up with an idea. I can tell you just hit the button. I just came up with an idea. This of course is Leptos running right now. I'll create the exact same thing in React and we'll see which one is faster. Thanks for pressing that like button. So I wanted to do this SSR test because I am creating a game live on Twitch in which pits 100 players against each other in the greatest Vim challenge of all time. And it's going to be playable via browser. Since I'm going to be using Wasm, I know that Wasm, you know, payloads can be four or 500k. So to give that instantaneous website feel, I wanted to just have it server-side rendered. Now, I did look into you versus React a while back, and you just didn't quite give me the performance I wanted to see, and so I'm very hopeful about Leptos. So what we server-side rendered is this right here. It's actually going to be a 24 by 80 terminal where we actually render out each pixel as a div. Not each pixel, each character in the terminal as a div. I know, there's plenty of ways we could have done this. This is the way I thought was the best. And yes, I am using Pop! OS just so you didn't have screen tear in that previous example. You know, to make you feel good, okay? I don't feel good. I want to go back to i3, but you feel better about it. And the test looked a little something like this, where I set up a nano node from Linode, and I would make 50 concurrent requests. As one request would complete, another one would be started. And I slowly increased the amount of concurrent requests being made and timed how long it took to complete each request. And of course, the requests per second. There are a couple interesting notes I should mention that the gzipped payload of React was about 1K, whereas the gzipped payload of Leptos was about 7K. So Leptos did actually kind of start off on the back foot on the heels, not looking too good. But let's check out the statistics. Let's actually see which one is blazingly fast. All right, so this is the first graph I did want to show you. This, of course, is going to be the blue line being Russ and Leptos, the red line being Node and React. Now, unfortunately, Node and React came in at a blazingly slow 38 requests per second, whether we did 50 parallel requests all the way up to 300 parallel requests. Of course, the y-axis being RPS. Rust and Leptos, on the other hand, was around 580 pretty much consistently through this entire thing which is significantly faster. But this second graph is the one that really is incredible to actually look at. Yes, this time bigger numbers, not good. Now I want you to notice that the blue line, which is Leptos, when I had 50 parallel requests going to the Rust server, the average response time was 82.6 milliseconds. That's pretty dang fast. Like that is incredibly fast considering 80 by 24 divs plus another three by 24 divs. That's a lot of divs to be rendered. And then actually written out and received on the other side. I'm shocked at how fast that is. React, on the other hand, at 50 parallel requests was 1.3 seconds to deliver the same payload. As the request went on, as you can see, Leptos got up to 511 milliseconds per request on average when there's 300 concurrent connections, whereas the React side was all the way up to 7.7 .7 seconds. Again, showing about a 15-ish X improvement using Leptos versus React. Yes, of course, again, we all expected React to be faster, React to be faster, React to be faster. <laughs> I actually didn't expect it to be this much faster. This is genuinely faster. But there's one more thing I wanted to show you, something that really puts the steak in the heart, that puts the bun in the oven. 
I don't think the last one's actually a commonly used phrase. I don't, I don't know if people use that one. So I did one more test because I wanted to find out how many parallel requests can I be making to the Node React server such that it has a similar running time as a Leptos Rust server. Even at five parallel requests, which is not a heavy amount of requests, React was dishing it out slow. In fact, it was slower, over 10% slower than 150 parallel requests to Leptos. That is over 30 times faster. The number that really matters in the end, how fast does this thing get in front of the user and how many times can you do that? Leptos and Rust destroyed Node and React. I mean, this is insanely faster. This is blazingly faster. Now, the one thing I don't want you to take away with is that you should just go and rewrite all your applications in Rust. I mean, it wouldn't be a terrible thing. You'd learn a lot about Rust and you'd become a really great programmer. But I think a really important note to make is that Leptos is a relatively young framework. React is very, very mature. They've had plenty of time to make a bunch of bad decisions, whereas Leptos has just seen all the different problems and have chosen a different way of doing things. So there are still plenty of sharp edges that are around Leptos, things that I don't even know about yet. Now, I'm positive one of the biggest things I'm going to hear is developer productivity. What about developer productivity? I do want to address that, but I'm going to say it in a different video because I want to take some time and show some real examples. So press that subscribe button. If you really want to see that, make sure you get notified. You know the drill. So just do it already. And if you really do like this content, then just hit the like button already. Make a comment. It helps me, makes you feel better, and I'll probably respond to you. But I do want to say that I am actually genuinely surprised at how fast Leptos is. I have a lot of confidence that that client side test, yes, this one that's going to give me a seizure just looking at, I think has a real chance of going in the favor of Leptos, which I think kind of marks a new day in the WASM world. One where that it's actually performant enough on the client side and has a really strong story on the server side and you get to use Rust. Which, I mean, are you going to complain about that? I don't think so. The name is the Primogen.